We are Christafari, and we welcome you to the very first ever reggae resurrection service. Let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Three, four. Hallelujah. Christ has risen, risen from the dead. Death has no stain. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Risen from the dead, death has no stain. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, in this day and age, in this pandemic, we really can't greet one another with a holy kiss as they would in the Bible. We shouldn't even fist bump or maybe even elbow tap, but we can greet each other like the New Testament believers did. One would say, he is risen, and the other would say, he is risen indeed. Let's do that together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Our Messiah has risen.
Luke 24, 1 through 8 says this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. this brief message, check out this short clip from our latest music video.
death has no stain. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, risen from the dead. Death has no stain. You can watch the rest of that video today on YouTube, along with our new pandemic music video. What a month it has been. Can we say what a year? And it's just April. 2020 has been an absolutely mind-blowing year. And did any of us expect anything of this, anything like this to happen? Right, guys? Yeah. I mean... What a year, and it's only April. Uh, none of us could have ever imagined that anything like this would have happened, that the world would be essentially on quarantine, and we would be here having a virtual church, the very first reggae resurrection service. <laughs> Who could have imagined in the history of the world there would be a time when someone you loved so much could die from suffocation due to shortness of breath. Or when people would be isolated, cowering behind closed doors, fearing for their lives, thinking, will I be next? Is this going to happen to me? Overwhelmed by anxiety, fearing for their own safety. If only the Bible had something to say about this. But wait. It does. Now, did it sound like I was just describing what's going on in America right now, this pandemic? I wasn't. What? No, I was not. <laughs> I was describing, though it sounded like it, I wasn't describing 2020. I was describing John 2020. When I talked about a time when someone would die gasping for breath, of suffocating, basically shortness of breath, not being able to breathe, that was Jesus on the cross for you. And when I talked about a time when people were cowering behind locked doors, fearing for their own lives, I'm talking about the disciples. You see, we're supposed to be in Israel this month, and any, raise your hand if you're kind of bummed about the fact that we didn't get a chance to go. Womp, womp. Yeah, yeah, it was... <sighs> That was the first of the, of the many cancellations in addition to our Italy tour. Lord willing, we will be, we'll be back there next year. But we, we look forward to the moment when we can walk where Jesus walked. Now, if you could time travel back to Israel for the first Easter, I think you'd be very surprised at what you'd see. It wouldn't be what you'd expect. It was a very dark and depressing day. For the most part, for anyone who believed in Christ, I mean, imagine the 25,000 plus people that he would speak to at a time from time to time. All these people thinking it's over. Dark, depressing day. Kind of like now. I mean, for many people, it's like no NBA, no NHL, no PGA, no MLB, no NCAA games, no Easter parade, no sales in stores in the mall, no theaters. They're all closed. No mega church services, no celebration in pastel colors. Who wears those anyways? No massive Easter egg hunts and no Easter baskets. Well, Actually, there is one. I think the new 2020 Easter basket is this one. Who wants it? <laughs> and maybe afterwards, later today, we can do a, an Easter egg hunt with toilet paper, what, what Ziza calls white gold. Um, yeah, we can, we can hide yeah. them throughout the house, and then, Ziza, you can find them. But let's, let's not have you try and find them when you really have to go. Okay. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was a dark time for them. It was a very dark time. Now, hope, it didn't go viral instantly. 
it took a while for the good news to spread. First, it was only a handful of people that realized that Christ has risen. And at first, well, it was the woman. I mean, Jesus said he was going to be back, just like Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Not the Terminator, but the Resurrector. At first, it was the woman that he showed himself to. Uh, and it was Mary specifically, and then Peter and two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Now, there's some interesting facts that, that, that fascinate me. Anybody here into superheroes? Raise your hand if you're into like, you know, the, the comics or the movies. Ooh. Yeah, okay. We won't ask if you're DC or Marvel, but <laughs> <laughs> if you're DC, I don't know what's wrong with you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, if you're into, into like superhero abilities. What would, if you could be any, have any one superpower, what would it be? Come on, shoot. Okay. Um, uh, teleport. Teleport. Okay. What, how about you, Abby? If you could fly. Fly. Okay. Read people's minds. Read people's minds. The power of gray skull. The power of gray skull. <laughs> Read people's minds. I wouldn't want it to do because that would probably not be anybody's friend anymore. <laughs> um, what other, what other superpowers would you pick? Invisibility. Invisibility, okay. The speed of flash. The speed of flash, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk, how about you, Justin? Um, I would have said flying. Flying, okay. Anybody want to be Aquaman? <laughs> Actually. Ooh, Actually, I want to be Aquaman. Okay. okay. No, so I want to tell so, uh, the, We all have our kind of wish list. Well, did you know that a resurrected body is not the same and our, our glorified body in heaven will not be the same as it is right now, which is great, which means no more pain, no more agony, no more back pains, no more crying, no more dying. But we learn a few things about Jesus and the resurrected body when he shows himself first to Mary. And some have argued that there may be some sort of cloaking or veiling mechanism, some sort of shape-shifting or something. And we see this because Mary is talking to him and she thinks he's the gardener. Did he have a different outfit on or something? I'm not sure. Until he says her name and looks at her, then she's like, oh, Rabboni, Rabbani, Ra Rabbi, she calls him. And then the disciples whom he loved, these guys who he walked with him for three years did not realize they were walking with him for many miles. As he's going through the entire Old Testament, all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, they didn't realize it until he broke bread with them later. So now perhaps it's not, it, it, maybe, maybe they were just so downcast that they couldn't look up or they were so focused on their problems that they didn't see the solution right in front of them that Jesus was there. Maybe that's what you're going through right now. You're just so downcast. Or some have argued that Jesus came back as a younger version of himself. You know, like like you kind of freeze at at your physical peak or whatever. So maybe like you're when when in heaven we we don't realize what where Marcus is because he he's an eighteen year old version without braces and without zits. You know, it's like his senior photo or whatever. I don't know what it's gonna be like, but for some reason they couldn't recognize him until bam they could. And maybe like I said, you're just so downcast that you're not realizing that he's right here. If so, this passage is for you. Another unique thing we learn about glorified bodies is when Jesus appears to his disciples. John 20, 19, it says this, on the evening of that day, first day of the week, which is a Sunday, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. So the doors are locked. They're, they're triple dead bolted. These guys are scared. This is what basically happened. They see their master taken away. He gets killed. Of course, they deny him. They scatter. I don't think virtually none of them were even there at the cross. I think maybe one of them was. But what's, what's happening is they're fearing for their own life. They're thinking, okay, they killed the leader. Ne we're next. We're the 12. We're the ones that are going to, you know, they're going to they're gonna try and stop the whole movement. So these guys are fearing for their own lives. And then all of a sudden, just like this. Oh, snap. <laughs> what the heck happened? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jesus just like shows up. And 
And what what would you think if you're locked behind closed doors? You know he's not climbing in through a window. What would you think if all of a sudden you just popped in like Fritz did? This is Fritz, by the way. This is not Jesus. Just letting you know that. Fritz, <laughs> Fritz thank you for, for showing that. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if all of a sudden he just pops in and he just says these words. It says, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. You. Everybody look, look at your neighbor and say, peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Nice. So I think another perk of a glorified body is to not be bound by our restrictions of space and time. Now, I don't know exactly how this works. And there are moments in the Old Testament where a few prophets get glimpses of this. And there are moments also, for instance, in the New Testament, one moment that I can think of uh, it was Philip with the Ethiopian. He baptizes him, and then he's a chunk, <laughs> and God had him go somewhere else, and he disappeared, it says. So Jesus was not bound by our restrictions of space and time. He could walk through walls, some would say. Others would call it teleportation. Some would call it quantum tunneling. I don't know what it is, but all I know is it is super cool. And I know that when we die, we get a, a, a glimpse of this also because it, As a believer, it says to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Kind of a beam me up Scotty thing. (laughs) Now, as a musicianary, can we all agree how incredibly awesome it would be if God gave us the ability to do this before paradise? Raise your hand if you would like this. Save so much money on flights. (laughs) Imagine, Imagine this. You'd be like this, okay? You'd be like... Good night, Brazil! <laughs> and then you're just gone. And you're like, uh, hmm, honey, what's in the fridge? <laughs> and you're instantly on your sofa watching some TV. Or how many times where we've been on tour and you've just been wishing that you could just lay down and be in your own bed? Oh, imagine the savings on airline tickets, <laughs> hotel rooms. Now imagine this. Next time we go back to Africa, ministering in the bush with a rural tribe, you say, hey, is there a bathroom around here? And somebody says, yeah, there's a hole in the ground over there. You're like, excuse me. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, excuse me, guys. So <laughs> imagine being able to do that. You just go home, go back to your own bathroom. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so, so much easier. Convenient. But missionary trips are not like that. So Jesus spontaneously pops up amongst them, and he says these words. Look at your neighbor and say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, why would he say that? I think part of it is because they were startled. They were freaking out. First of all, they hadn't seen this miracle before. And beyond that, he says this. After this, he showed him his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Now, wouldn't you be overjoyed? You thought it was over, right? You thought Satan had won. Jesus had been defeated. Oh, snap. That was his plan all along for Jesus to die so that Satan could be defeated. You see, God loves to turn crucifixions into resurrections. It's the ultimate reversal, if you really think about it. The greatest exchange, my wretched sinfulness for his grace, for his forgiveness, for his righteousness. Now, in verse 21, it says this. Again, Jesus says, peace be with you. Now, this is the second time that he said this. Everybody say it. Peace be with you. Peace Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Now, I don't know what 2020 holds. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. I do know what 2021 holds. What happens in 2021? Not the year, but the verse. Jesus once again says, peace be with you. So, and then it says, after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came the doors being shut, second time he's doing this stunt now, and stood in the midst and said, guess what he said? Peace, peace, peace be, be with you. you. Peace to you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, knowing that Thomas had already, had already said, I won't believe until I do this, he said to Thomas, reach your finger here. Look at my hands. 
and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but be believing. Think about that. And that's really my challenge to you in this dark time. Do not be unbelieving, but be believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, the greatest profession of faith, my Lord and my God. If anybody ever doubts if Jesus is Lord, if Jesus is God, it says it right there. So for the third time, Jesus has said to his disciples, peace be with you. So as I was reading through, as we as a band were going through every single verse on the resurrection, you remember that day we were, we were in Argentina. In fact, I think we were driving to film our He is Risen music video. I said, hey guys, let's study about his resurrection. Let's read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Acts. Let's read throughout the epistles. Anytime it mentions his resurrection, let's get the whole story. And it's absolutely fascinating. What stuck out to me was the three times. Again, Jesus loves to do things in threes. Can you think of some other threes he's done? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh huh. What else? What's another three? And on the third, third day. day. <laughs> That's right. He's and, and so why peace? Why did he come with peace? And I don't think that this was just a normal shalom kind of a thing. This the, he's really trying to emphasize peace. I think it's because life is full of storms. Life is full of storms. Now, he may not keep you from the storm, but he will keep you through it. Now, you guys have heard me so many times preach the message that surrounds the ocean's song about this incredible storm, the, the most scary, the scariest storm that these disciples had ever experienced in their lives and how Jesus came out to them walking on the water and how Peter, I believe, chose to leave the boat and to be in the midst of the storm with the only one that could calm the storm than to be in a sinking boat with his friends. A time before that, Jesus had calmed the storm. He was sleeping on the boat is Jesus in your boat? (laughs) If he is, well, you'll get through that storm. You definitely will. And just remember again, he may not keep us from the storms, but he'll keep us through the storm. He has the ability, the only one who has the ability to calm the storm and the inner storm as well. Now, I was just speaking with with one of you today, just talking about the frustration that you had and all the feelings and emotions going on and just, oh, just want a punching bag and don't know what to think and don't, maybe you're wrestling, maybe you're struggling with what's going on. Maybe you're just too much media consumption. Maybe you're overwhelmed. Maybe you're just cooped up. God can give you that stillness in the midst of the storm. He can give you that peace in the pestilence, that hope in the hurricane The peace in the midst of the plague, the quiet and the chaos, the contemplation amidst the cacophony of maddening thoughts and media, doubts and fears. Peace be with you. But true peace won't be with you until Christ is with you. Verse 21, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. You guys remember what the word apostles means? What does apostle mean? Sent ones. Sent ones. We are the sent ones. That's right. The apostles were sent. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. They will take the place of Jesus to the world. It's okay. This is a weird thing to wrap your head around. Okay. So Jesus basically first, he's like, okay, guys, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go by the way. He, he flew away, which is one of the superhero tricks that you guys said you wish you had. Um, he, he ascended. Okay. He said, I, I'm going to go and I'm going to send my Holy spirit. And so he's going to be my replacement. And instead of Jesus being in one place at one time, he can be in all of our hearts for those who believe. So that's my replacement for you. But you know who my replacement to the world is? You. All of you guys. Remember that time when I sent you guys out and said, go in twos and do this and, you know, shake the dust off your feet if they don't receive you. Well, guess what? I'm going to send you again. That's why he says, you know, as I was sent, so I'm sending you. So we are the sent ones. They are this. They were the sent ones to take the place of Jesus to the world, not to be Jesus, but to be the hands and feet 
to bring his peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. Wherever we go. In fact, full armor of God. What do we have on our feet again? The gospel of peace. I think Saddleback, they call it, they don't call it a a mission trip. They call it a a peace trip. They they call it a, a peace plan. I thought it was so weird, but now when I look at this verse, I'm like, that is it. We're supposed to be ambassadors of peace, our feet shod with the gospel of peace. We tell people that they can have peace with God, forgiveness of their sins if they ask. And once they receive Christ, once you receive Christ, you will have the peace of God. (laughs) Peace with God and then peace of God. Now, I'm going to say something that people could take out of context. It may sound controversial, but Jesus never tells the world to go to church. Okay, worldly people, he doesn't tell unbelievers to go to church. Now, as believers, we're not supposed to forsake the assembly of the righteous, right? But he tells the church to go to the world. And that's what we're called to do. Now, I think it's great if an unbeliever goes to church, but the goal is for the church to go to the world to win them over and ultimately invite them in. Now, what what can I say in this day and age, in this time that we're going through, but erene, which is the Greek word, peace. It's where we get the name Irene from. And that's what we need. We need that peace right now, that state of tranquility, the exemption from rage and havoc and war. We need that harmony, that security, that safety. We need, we need prosperity as the stock markets are crashing. We need the Messiah's peace. The way that leads to peace is salvation. In Christianity, in fact, this peace is described as the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. Do you have that? And so fearing nothing from God and content. Are you content with whatever the Lord allows to come our way? I got to be honest with you guys. This has been a weird year. We sat down in early January And we penned out the entire year. We didn't even pencil it out. We penned it out. We were so confident. We're going here. We're doing this. We're doing this. We were going to do 30 nations. Our goal is to see a million decisions for Christ. We're already at 700,000. Glory to God. But something happened. And as something canceled, I can't explain it to you guys. But as these things change or cancel, I just have this overwhelming peace about it all? Do you, Avion? Yeah. It's like, it's like, I may not know, as I said before, what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And when God says no, it's like a okay, at least I know I'm not going in that direction. And although it's this is what I want to do, sometimes we just have to really trust him all the time. We just have to trust in him and have that peace, that contentment, regardless of what comes your way. And accept those closed doors. Sometimes you're behind closed doors. But then there's the other side of the peace definition as found in the Bible. It's the blessed state the devout and upright have after death. Now, this is the tough one. Just a few days ago, our guitarist for about, what, seven, eight years, Obi Obian, lost his mother. And I just can't explain, can't express how tough that is. You know that if you've lost a loved one. But when I speak with his father, Ermi speaking about his own wife, he just has this, this peace, this, I'm going to see her. I, I don't doubt. I don't wonder. I don't question. She's in a better place and I will be there with her too. And there's this hope that believers have that is untangible. It surpasses understanding. And that is the kind of thing right here, right now, that is turning atheists into believers. As for the first time, people around the world are thinking, this could be me. 
I mean, first they said, well, if you unless you're 66 or above, well, so everybody's 66 or above is freaking out. And then there's, then they're like, well, there are people in their thirties dying. Oh, somebody's 17, an, a child, an infant. All of a sudden, everybody's starting to freak out. This is becoming like, well, like the original Passover almost. We're starting to wonder who will be next. And people, as they're thinking about where they're spending eternity, they're starting to realize this whole no eternity concept. I'm really not feeling that anymore. Maybe that's you. A fear of death like never before. When I was your age, Ziza, I used to decorate our front lawn. My mom thought I was crazy. I would I would buy plastic skeletons and I would hang them everywhere and I'd I'd hang ghosts and stuff from the trees and I would I would make a cemetery in my parents front yard and you know what I would write on the tombstones the fake tombstones made out of cardboard or styrofoam do you know what I write RIP do you know what that means rest in peace rest in peace but no soul is truly resting in peace unless they're rejoicing in paradise. And you can't get there. You can't get to heaven unless you've been forgiven. So there are some crucial Bible verses that I would love to have the different band members share real quick that have stuck out to us as we've had this study before, as we've continued to pour over, what does peace mean to you? So first, Avian, would you share with us this verse? This is John 14, 27. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. He does not give as the world gives. Amen. Kavehana, she's Ziza's nanny and she's the newest member of the band. She's from Hilo Hawaii. Read for us, please. Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I love that. The peace of God transcends all understanding. May it guard your hearts. Ziza, do you think you could read Psalm 2911 for me, please? Mm -hmm. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Yes! <laughs> Amen. He gives you strength and he blesses you with peace. And Marcus, could you please read Isaiah 26, 3? You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Amen. The fruit of of trust is peace. So awesome. And Nikita, how about John 16, 33? I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Take heart. Look at your neighbor and say, take heart. Take heart. If you're watching this from, a, from somewhere else next to somebody, look at that person and say, take heart. I have overcome the world. You see, Christ is an overcomer. They thought he was conquered on Good Friday. But on Good Sunday, the greatest Sunday of all, he is risen. Everybody say, he He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Amen. It's been said that the opposite of fear is faith, right? Well, I would argue that the antithesis of anxiety is to trust. And the fruit of that trust is peace. The fruit of that trust is peace. So you have to put your trust in God and that fruit will be peace. Peace is not necessarily the absence of war, but true peace is the absence of inner turmoil. So if you're going through that inner turmoil right now, Get that true peace from the only one who can give it to you. Now, in our pandemic music video, in our pandemic song, there's one verse, one one word, should I say, that I never, never said in it. Do you guys remember what it is? What's the one word that I won't call it? Coronavirus. I won't call it corona because this virus does not have a crown in my life. No. For Jesus alone is the king of all kings, and he's the prince of Peace. peace. 
That's right. But you won't have that peace unless he is your prince. And you can't go to his kingdom unless he is your king. I'm going to say that again. He's the king of all kings, the prince of peace. But you won't have that peace unless he's your prince. And you can't go to his kingdom unless he's your king. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. That's right. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. But his peace can't rule in your heart if Christ is not ruling in your heart, if Christ is not in your heart. So Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. So how was Jesus sent, you may ask? What was he sent to do? The number one verse that you hear me quote every single time I give an altar call, practically, it's not John 3.16. I always do that. But then I I take it one step further. John 3.17, for God did not send his son into the world to judge or condemn the world, but that the world may be saved. He's on a rescue plan. Saved through him. That's the mission that Jesus was sent on. And that is the mission that we are sent on. And that is why I am here right now. That is why we are in our living room to bring you the best message of all. It's this one right here. It's the cross of Christ. The best message of all is found right there on our wall. Jesus died so that you could live. Jesus took on your sinfulness so that you could be forgiven, so that you could be cleansed. As I said earlier, you can't get to heaven unless you've been forgiven, until you've been forgiven. And it's appointed for man to die once. We're not promised tomorrow. And after this comes the judgment. The wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is eternal life. That's the ultimate peace. God demonstrates his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son Jesus on that good Friday, that great Friday to die for you so that you could go to heaven, so that you could live for him. Will you say yes to Jesus today? Will you say yes to that perfect peace? Just close your eyes right now if you're having any sort of fear, anxiety of where you're going to go when you die, if you have any sort of doubt as to where you will spend eternity, if you've been struggling and wrestling and you know that you need the peace of God, say yes to J-E-S-U-S right here, right now. Make him your Prince of Peace. Say these words out loud. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Jesus. forgive me. me. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I turn away from my sin. I turn to you. Thank you for dying for me. For raising from the dead. Give me peace. I raise my hand. Raise your hand if you pray in this prayer. Even where, wherever you're at. Just raise your hand and just say, Jesus, save me. I choose heaven. From this day forward, forward, I will follow you. you. In Jesus' name, name. amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, as you're watching, would you do us a massive, huge favor? Would you not just raise your hand right here, but would you, in the comments below, would you give us a thumbs up that you officially have prayed that prayer, that you've said yes to Jesus, and that you've received his peace? And the next step, well, where do we go from here? Nikita, would you share us the four things that we want to challenge each one of you guys to do right now? Yes. So the four things that we want to encourage you in is, first of all, to read the word of God. It is the truth and it's how you know what he says about us. But also, secondly, pray to God, have a connection with him, talk to him. And then thirdly, you have a story. So share how you came to Christ so that other people will hear the good news, too. And then as last Get connected to a church. Even though we can be physically meeting, you can still virtually get connected so that you can get discipled. Amen. Thanks so much for that. Read your Bible, pray, go to church, and share your faith. And 
God wants you to share your faith with others. And so one of the things we want to encourage you to do right here, right now, is if you prayed that prayer, if you raised your hand, if you asked God to give you that peace, if you received Jesus, whether for the first time or as a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter, you came home, would you let us know by giving a thumbs up in the comments below, please? We want to pray for you specifically and personally. And another way that you can share is to tell others about Jesus and to help send missionaries like us around the world. As the Father sent me, I am sending you, and we are sent ones as well. Will you partner with us in this? Take a moment and watch this short video to find out more about our ministry and how you can do that. Thanks. Our mission has always been to reach the lost at any cost. But what about the third world countries, the developing nations that can't afford to bring out even one of us? So we decided to become musicianaries, full-time musical missionaries that go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel to those who could never afford to bring us out. God has given us this huge platform in, in different countries so we can throw a stage up in, in the middle of nowhere and people know who we are. Music is a universal language that really speaks to all cultures and all languages. And in that, we're able to attract people who wouldn't normally go to church or respond to other forms of ministry. It's a great opportunity for big crowds to come to hear, and we just give them the gospel. One thing that sets us apart from so many other bands is that we always preach the gospel. In every single concert, we give an opportunity for people to respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. We are called to reach the lost, meaning the suicidal teenagers, the homeless, the drug addicts, those that are in broken families, pretty much everyone. Another part of our mission is reaching the last. It's really cool having the opportunity to minister to the tribes around the world because I come from an island nation. There's nothing like that moment when we get to give the gospel to see as many people as possible to come to Christ. God has called us to reach the least of these. Think about trash cities in Honduras. Think about the slums in Kenya or even Papua New Guinea and reaching the little girls that we meet with no clothing and here we are able to provide clothing or those who don't have food and being able to feed them. And then we bring them the gospel, the truth, the message of hope, the message of love, everything that Jesus represents. Every one of our concerts is free and we have set out to minister in third world and impoverished nations on every single continent. But we can't do it on our own. We need musicianary partners such as yourself. Would you be willing to join our monthly support team and help send us out to the ends of the earth to reach the lost at any cost and make disciples of all nations?
Amen. So as we come to a conclusion, I want to close this off with us taking communion together, partaking in the Lord's Supper. And to do so, I have invited Fritz Madden. This is our drummer from early 2000s, right? Mm -hmm. And you're the rock steady man, the ska man. And I love having you at our shows because you're always doing that dance. What's that dance you do in the very front? Come on. Oh, yeah, that's it. It looks like he's boxing. He's boxing the ground. (laughs) Now, in our pandemic music video, our family had communion with Thomas's English muffin, and I think we used some cranberry grape juice or something like that. It's probably not kosher. Now, you're you're one of the most knowledgeable people I know about biblical history, and and tell us about this time, about what what the original communion, the original Lord's Supper was like. What what was that celebrating? That was celebrating Passover. Yeah. Now Passover. It was remembering a certain time. Mm-hmm. What was that time? Well, Passover remembers the time when the children of Israel were in Egypt and God brought them out of Egypt. It, something happened. The word Passover means that that basically death wouldn't come into your house, right? Right, right. So, so God, God brought all these plagues on Egypt. There were 10 plagues. Yeah. And the last one was the death of the firstborn. Oh, my gosh. But he told the Israelites, he said, if you take the blood of a lamb... What? And you put the lamb on on your on the doorpost and on the lintel, that I would see that blood and I would pass over you and protect you, and that the death would not come into your home. I, and I've heard people say that if it, like if this is the doorway, if you put the blood there, there, and there, or whatever, kind of making the shape of a cross, but the blood of a lamb. It, it basically protects you from death. And in this case, we're talking about the blood of the lamb protecting you from the second death, you know, from, from eternal death, eternal separation. So, so are you saying that when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, which we're about ready to do, it was a Passover celebration? Absolutely. Okay, so tell us, it, he probably didn't use Thomas's English muffins. No, 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 no. Tell, tell, no. Us, tell us more about it and give us just the, the rough before we do it together. Well, you know, it's interesting. When, when, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Oh, snap. So that is what Jesus came to do. And, and so a lot of amazing things happened. You know, there was a time when, when, the, when, the, when you're supposed to go out and pick the lamb. Okay? Oh, wow. You're supposed to select the lamb that you're going to use. And it's on the 10th day of the month. And the amazing thing is that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the donkey on that very day. Triumphal entry. The triumphal entry. He was the Lamb of God. He was he was presenting himself. Wow. And they chanted to him from the Psalm 118. They said, Hosanna. Hosanna. Yeah. We Blessed just sang is he the who song. comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's a psalm that they chant every Passover. And so wow. he was he was fulfilling that role. And then what did he do? He went into the temple of God and he cleansed the temple of, of all the things that were going on. Cracked the whip. Right? Well, that's the, the, the very thing that the Jews do before they celebrate Passover. They go through their whole house and they cleanse every part of the house of every bit of leaven, every, every impure uh, bread that can be found in the okay. house. And Jesus was cleansing the, the house of God. And ultimately, now he cleansed, he cleans us. He does, yeah. he does. That's and what Which the is Holy why Spirit we have does. the communion after we give the altar call. So this, by the way, this is going to be, we want to encourage you to join us with this. So as we continue to talk here, find yourself some juice, find yourself some grape juice or something. I mean, I remember one time our band had communion with Coke. I wouldn't, Coca-Cola, I wouldn't recommend it, but find some sort of liquid, find some sort of, of cracker and or bread. So um, I, I, I just want to encourage you though, don't partake in this if you have not prayed that prayer, but let's continue. Yeah. Yeah, so Jesus was the unleavened bread. Now, at every Passover, they have an unleavened bread. An unleavened bread is basically like a cracker. Okay. Has, has no leaven now, in it. Now, why did I think it was it was just like a flatter, like a pita or something? I, I really don't know why you would think <laughs> <laughs> Because I eat Greek food a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it was this. So it, yeah. I, I call this a cracker. Yeah. It's so, it, so it's more like a saltine and less like a something you'd get at Panera. It, it has no yeast in it, so the okay. bread doesn't rise, okay. it stays flat. Okay, okay, interesting. And then, so he said, For I received from the Lord that which was passed unto you, the Lord Jesus said, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. So this is the kind of bread. This is the bread, yes. Okay, and then when he had given thanks, what kind of thanks would they say? Okay, well, let, let me, so... 
So what they do at the beginning of the Passover yeah. Seder, right? Yeah, they, go for it. They take a piece of bread mm-hmm. and they break it. Oh, okay? snap. They take the, a, a piece of that and they stick it in a, in, a, in a white linen cloth and they hide it. Okay. okay. So after the meal, after the meal, they go and retrieve it and they break it and they take it. They so they set that together. aside so somebody doesn't, who isn't too hungry doesn't eat it all? <laughs> it's just for a special purpose okay. they okay. set aside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so then, then they bless it, they break it, they say, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, homotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then they break it and they partake of it together. And Jesus was the bread of life. Jesus was and the bread of life. where he was born, Bethlehem? He was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. The house of bread. This is so cool. <laughs> we got to do this in Israel together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's do this together then. Um, can, we, can we do the bread part now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's pass one of those around and let's partake in that. And, and from home, let's do the same. I'll break off a piece there. Okay. Go ahead and pass this around, guys. Get your get your bread, get your crackers ready. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead. We thank you, Jesus, for for your body being broken for us. Now let's talk about the cup. It says, in the same way after supper, he took the cup. Tell us, tell us what we're talking about here. Now, I, I have a cup that I made. Made this in ceramics class in 1989, the year that Christ Fari got started. has a little fish there, the cross, the Star of David. We're ready to go. Fill her up. <laughs> what do we put in it? All right. We put kosher juice in it. Kosher or wine, juice. Or wine. Okay, wine. Okay. What makes something kosher, by the way? Um, well, it's pure. Okay. It's just pure grape juice. There's nothing added, and uh, it's been it's been checked by the rabbis, and they've considered that that it's that it's pure. Okay. Okay. Don't you don't have to fill it up. Fill it up because I'm going to be the only one drinking from that one specifically. Um, go ahead and pass this around, guys. And uh, why don't you grab your juice from home, some sort of liquid, the closest liquid you can find a juice, and why don't you do this with us as well? As we uh, pour this around, anything else you can tell us about this juice portion? Yeah, so there, there's four glasses of juice you drink from, from a Passover Seder. And that's because God gave the Israelites four promises. He said, I will take you out from, from Egypt. Okay. I will take you out with a, with a strong arm. And I will redeem you. And I will bless you. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. And so they drink from it four times. Now the third cup... The third cup comes just after the meal. Okay. And this is what's known as the cup of redemption. Oh, wow. Because he said, I will redeem you. Wow. Is this the one he's, we're talking about here? This is the one we're talking about here. Oh, this snap. The communion. So, the, so the significance of what he's saying, it's, it's, he didn't create this. He didn't just sit down and say, okay, we're going to do something new today, guys. He did something that for hundreds, probably thousands of years, Jews had been doing, but now it had a whole new significance because it was being fulfilled. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wow. About a thousand years, yeah. thousand years. Incredible. So that is the redemption cup. You said four cups. There's four cups. There's one more cup. Okay. It's the cup of praise because he said, I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. Now, this fourth cup is the cup where Jesus said, I will not drink of this cup with you until I drink it again anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Who's got goosebumps right now? <laughs> that is so cool. So he's... The third one is the cup of redemption. Yes. And then he says, the fourth one, yeah, I'm not going to do that one with you until we have the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. That's right. Wow. There it is. Okay. So in this way, in the same way it says, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. In remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's do this together.
So there you have it. That was Christafari's very first reggae resurrection service. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you share it with others. Please like it. And don't forget, down below, to give us a thumbs up in the comments section if you prayed that prayer. Thank you so very much. Check out our latest music video, Christ is Risen, and please share it with others. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching. To partner with us, please go to ChristSafari.com forward slash donate or simply click the link in the description below. May the peace of the Lord be with you.